Hello everyone, this is the Bovine Terror, and today we will be talking about a very important topic. Today I am joined by my friend, Cow Spook. And together we will be showing you all the importance of living with snakes and proper snake safety in North America. To begin, let's start with all the reasons everyone should actually want to live alongside snakes. Snakes are an important part of many ecosystems in North America, and help to control the populations of many animals like rodents and locusts, who, without the control that snakes impose on them, would increase their populations immensely. A study conducted by the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, estimated that nearly $2 billion were spent by farmers on insecticides in the United States in 2012. And this figure had only increased each year in the time frame they did this study, which was from 2005 to 2012. Many of the insects that farmers aim to control are eaten by many snake species. If snakes are left to consume these insects, farmers can save a lot of money on insecticides and destroy crops. Another study done by Speciality Consultants, LLC, reported that the total pest control industry in the United States earned around $8.6 billion in 2017 which was an increase from 2016, where $8.1 billion were earned. This is a more generalized figure, however, it includes pests like rodents and insects that snakes eat. These numbers would be far larger if snakes were not around to eat these pests, so snakes help people immensely by saving them money on pest controls. Now, a lot of people do understand the benefits that snakes provide people economically, but a lot of them argue that the risks snakes pose to humans in the form of deadly bites far outweigh the benefits they provide for us. This, however, is very untrue. First, in North America, there are around 300 species of snakes. This number is pretty highly debated, species getting named or reclassified or things like that. But of those 300 species, only around 45 of them are venomous. This means that there are around 255 non-venomous snake species in North America, which means that the vast majority of snakes someone living in North America will encounter will not be dangerous in any way. Second, the danger of snake bites is severely exaggerated in developed countries in North America. In the early 2000s, the American Association of Poison Control Centers reported an annual average of 2,000 venomous snake bites with around 5 to 6 deaths per year in the United States. This number is almost certainly too small, though, as many people bitten do not report their bite or their doctors do not consult with a poison control center. So a more accurate number would be around 7,000 to 8,000 venomous snake bites per year with 5 to 6 deaths. Assuming each bite is attributed to a different person, that means that only around 7,500 people out of 300 million people in the United States get bit by a venomous snake, and only 6 to highball it, out of every 300 million people die of snake bites in the United States. That means that about every 1 in 40,000 people in the United States will get bitten by a venomous snake each year, that is, assuming every bite is to a different person, which is not the case. And only 1 in 50 million people, 1 in 50 million people will die from venomous snake bites. Additionally, 98% of these venomous bites occur when the person is deliberately trying to handle, harm, or kill the snake. However, these numbers are very different in other less developed countries in North America, as access to anti-venom is much harder and exposure to snakes in daily life is more frequent. These numbers are also not well known as bites are rarely reported or documented. Given this, I completely understand people with the opinion that the risks posed by snake bites outweigh the benefits, but only if they live in countries where anti-venom is not easy to come by. In places where it is easy, like the United States and Canada, which make up the vast majority of the population and landmass of North America, there's no argument that their risks outweigh their benefits. Now, I'm sure I've not heard every argument that exists for why snakes' risks outweigh their benefits, and because of this, I encourage anyone who watches this to comment on why you believe their risk is greater than their benefit, especially after hearing my argument for why they are beneficial. Also, if people have further arguments for why snakes are more beneficial than harmful, please also leave comments saying what they are, because I would love to hear about them. Also, remember that this is North America specifically. 
it is a very different story on other continents, and a whole different video could be made for each continent with very, very different information. So, at least for now, let's leave the conversation in North America. Now, you may be thinking, okay, it's a good idea to let snakes do their thing because they are beneficial, but what if they come into my yard, or they're at my campsite, or they're near me at the park I'm visiting, or anywhere in my vicinity for that matter? Well, that is exactly what I shall be teaching all of you in this video. I shall be showing you a number of scenarios using a fake snake that doesn't even really look like a snake so as not to frighten anyone who may be watching this and may have extreme phobias for snakes. And I shall be showing you what to do in each scenario, and my friend, Cow Spook, will be showing you what you should and should not do. So, let's say you're visiting a park you like, or perhaps it's a wilderness area, or you're working outside, you decide. The scenario will be unchanged regardless. Just a note, I am filming this in winter, so there will not be snow on the ground if you encounter a snake. But I'm a busy college student, and this was the only time I could go film this. So, you know, just, just uh, use your imagination. If you do find a snake in the snow, though, send me a picture of that, because that'd be cool. I want to see that. I wonder why the snake's out in the snow. Poor snake. Anyway, so you are just walking around, enjoying the scenery, when you see a snake on the ground. Now, there are a few options you have if you see this, but first, let's look at what you should not do. And Cowspook is going to show you what not to do. Trying to pick up the snake. As we've discussed earlier in the video, 98% of venomous snake bites in the U.S. result because people try to handle, harm, or kill the snake. Unless you have been trained by a professional, or are a professional, you should not pick up snakes with your bare or gloved hands. Not only can this get you bit, but snakes are very small compared to you, and you can accidentally harm them if you do not know what you are doing. And the point of this video is to live with snakes and not kill them or harm them. To repeat, never pick up a snake with your bare hands if you have not been directly trained by a professional or are a professional snake handler. For your safety and the safety of the snake, please. Panicking. This just makes you look silly and does not fix the situation in any way. Screaming, running, or anything like this can only lead to you hurting yourself by tripping and falling hurting others by running into them, hurting the snake by scaring it, or just lead to people looking at you strangely. This can also start panic in people around you, as a screaming person is usually a sign of danger and can cause others around you to hurt themselves or others because they begin panicking as well. This also endangers the snake, as some people have an immediate response of killing snakes for some reason, probably because they haven't watched videos like this. Which brings us to the next bad option. Try to kill and hurt the snake. Not only does this go against the goal of this video, but what does this actually accomplish? The snake is just there, it isn't hurting anyone, and if this is an outdoor area, it is technically the snake's home, so it's actually supposed to be there. The snake isn't going to chase after anyone. In fact, the response of most snakes in North America is to run away from humans or to curl up in a defensive pose and wait till the humans leave and then after that, leave themselves. Also, as mentioned earlier, trying to kill the snake puts you at risk of getting bit, as 98% of people in the US who get bit by venomous snakes do so while trying to handle, harm, or kill the snake. Now that we've seen what you should not do and what the consequences of those actions are, let's look at the correct options you have. Just leave the snake alone. Snakes are not going to chase after you. They can't eat you, and they don't have any other reason to attack you, so they will leave you alone if you leave them alone. And again, emphasis on North America. This is a different story in other parts of the world. Move the snake. Now, if you're worried that the snake may get hurt, or hurt some unsuspecting or uninformed person or pet, then what you can do is either use a snake hook or a similar device, or even just a long, sturdy stick to gently pick up the snake and carry it away from other people or pets. This keeps your hands away from the snake so it cannot bite you and minimizes the risk of you harming the snake while carrying it. If the snake will not let you pick it up, just use the same device, stick, or snake hook to guide the snake away from people. Remember, emphasis when you're doing this, be careful with the snake. Be gentle with the snake. You are a lot bigger than the snake. It's not difficult for you to hurt the snake on accident. So if you're going to do this, please, please, 
be very, very gentle and be very careful with the snake. Call someone else. You can call an animal control center, police, or if in a state or federal recreation area, the presiding agency of that area, like a park ranger or a forest manager, to come and deal with the snake. If you do not feel comfortable leaving it or dealing with it yourself, this is a good option. Another person you could contact would be someone you know who does feel comfortable dealing with snakes. Then you know if they can help and if they will help the snake or not. This is, of course, only, only if you know someone who can deal with the snake and not get hurt. Don't try to involve someone if they do not know what to do and could get hurt in the process. That just, that complicates things way, way worse than they need to be. Let others in the area know the snake is there. You do not need to make them scared, and you honestly shouldn't make them scared. Calmly let people who are close to the snake know that the snake is there, and reassure them that the snake won't hurt them as long as they don't approach it. Letting people know the snake is there is important for allowing others to react appropriately to the snake, so they don't accidentally hurt the snake, get bit, or panic. Telling people will sometimes result in people wanting to hurt the snake. This will just happen and it will end up being your responsibility to not let anyone do this. You do not need to do anything drastic. Just reassure those people that the snake is not hurting anyone and that it will be taken away by you or someone you've called. If you do not try to stop those people from killing the snake, they will either kill the snake, which as we've discussed is a bad thing, they will get bit by the snake, which again is a bad thing, or both things may happen and that's just even worse or the snake will just get away. Only one of these options is good in any way, and if you assure people who want to kill it that the snake will be taken care of, most people will accept that and wait till the snake is taken away. These people are not usually people who find pleasure in killing snakes or think it's a good thing. They just often think that's the only way to protect people from snakes. And so it is the responsibility of the informed to teach the uninformed that there are better options. And it's not that these people are stupid, and it's not that these people are ruthless killers or anything like that. They legitimately just don't know. Like, there's a lot of bad stigma about snakes, and it's just up to people who have been taught to teach people who have not been taught that snakes are a good thing and that snakes really aren't going to hurt you as long as you leave them alone. That's why I made this video in the first place, is to try to inform more people, try to get more people to help snakes out. Now, let's look at a different scenario. After all, you may be thinking, well, it's not a big deal if I'm in a public outdoor setting. It's the snake's home, and I shouldn't be surprised or worried seeing it there. I'm just concerned if I find it in my yard, or my house, or anywhere on my property. What if I leave it alone and later on I don't see it and get bit? Or if there are younger people in the house, like a sibling or a child, that may not know how to avoid the snake and could get bit? Or a, a pet that could do the same thing? Well, again, let's look at another scenario and look at what you should not do. All the same things as in the previous scenario. All these things still apply on your property, and they are just general snake safety guidelines you should always follow. To address the killing or harming it, yes, it is now not where it's supposed to be, at least if it's in your house. So killing it does technically protect yourself from potentially getting bit, but the point of this video is still violated by trying to kill it, and you have the same risk of getting bit by trying to kill it as you did when it was outside. The risk has not changed. The snake is still has all the same capabilities it did before, it's just in a new environment that it's not comfortable with. Leaving it there, under certain circumstances. If it is outside, or in your yard or property, leaving it where it is is still a good option. However, if it is in your house, or you're afraid that a pet or another person on your property may get hurt by it or hurt it, then leaving it where it is is not a good idea. If you leave it in your house, it probably won't find its way out of your house and may appear somewhere you don't expect after you've left it, which could result in you getting bit or you hurting it. 
Also, snakes usually do not have food or water sources they can access within a house. So if you leave them there, they probably won't get out of your house and will die in your house. And dead snakes in your house are bad for a number of reasons that I probably don't have to explain. Lose sight of it. If you lose sight of it, it will be much harder to remove from your home. All the good options for dealing with the snake require that you know where it is. Snakes are very good at hiding. And within your home, they can hide in places you can't get to, like behind or under furniture, or into drawers or holes, or even in places you didn't even know anything could go into. So make sure you keep sight of it and you know where it is. Now, what you should do in this scenario, all the same things as in the first scenario, except leaving it alone as discussed earlier. These are all still good options and should always be what you think about if you see a snake. Stop the snake from leaving the area if it's in your house. If the snake is in a certain area, attempting to trap it in that general area is always a good idea. This prevents it from wandering all over your house and allows you to leave the snake alone and know where it is, thus eliminating the need to not lose sight of it. If you try to restrict the area it can move around in, make sure you make the area large enough that you do not endanger yourself or the snake. So don't try to trap it in a bucket or a cup. Build a large wall all around it to keep it in a confined area. But allow yourself to have space between the snake and yourself so it doesn't bite you, and so you do not accidentally set something on the snake as you're trying to trap it, thus harming it. I don't have this option because I'm a college student with nothing to build a wall around the snake, as the only thing I could use would be books, and they aren't usually tall enough to trap any snake. So if you have materials that you can do this, this is an option for you. If you don't, then this unfortunately is not an option for you. This is also only really useful in your house, and it's not very helpful outside, as then you only prevent the snake from leaving on its own accord. Letting the snake leave on its own is always the preferred option in any situation, as it prevents anyone from being harmed by the snake. But this option is not always available. So use it when you can. If you can't, then look to another option. Keep young people and pets away from the snake, but let those people and others in the house or on the property know the snake is there. Letting people in your house know that the snake is in the house and where it is is important because if people are startled by the snake, they can do any number of bad things that could injure themselves, others, or the snake. Also, if anyone is afraid of the snake, then they will know not to go near it since they know where it is. Keeping children or pets away from the snake is also a good idea because pets cannot understand what you're saying if you explain the snake could be dangerous to them or that they could hurt it. And children often do not understand the dangers of such a situation or what they could accidentally do to harm the snake. All right, so. If you guys have any other questions about what to do in any scenario, by all means ask, and I will respond with a few suggestions. As a final point, I have a few more bits of information that may help some of you with snake safety and cohabitation. First is identifying snakes. Identifying what kind of snake you're looking at is always an invaluable tool for snake safety. Additionally, it's just fun to be able to know what kind of snake you're looking at. I found a website that I will link in the description that is very useful for identifying snakes in the US and Canada and allows you to narrow down what snake you're looking at by region you found the snake, which is very helpful and is often very difficult to pour through guidebooks of entire countries trying to figure out what snakes live in the area you saw the snake. I do apologize, I have not found a very good or free guide for identifying snakes in other North American countries. But oftentimes doing a web search to identify snakes can at least give you an idea of what kinds of snakes you could have seen. If you aren't sure, never assume. This is probably even more invaluable than identifying the snake, as there are many snakes that mimic venomous snakes that are not venomous themselves. So even if you think it's a non-venomous snake that is mimicking a venomous one, do not assume it is non-venomous unless you are absolutely positive that it isn't venomous. The best thing you can do is never assume the snake you are looking at is harmless, but also don't live in fear that all snakes are venomous. Just be careful and follow the guidelines of this video and you should be totally fine. Finally, my last word of advice is to enjoy your encounters with snakes. 
Snakes are elusive, shy creatures, and it's a decently rare and exciting opportunity to see snakes. So if you do encounter one, enjoy it, because you may not get to see very many in your lifetime. And snakes are so cool. So enjoy every moment you get with snakes. After all, if we're going to live together with snakes, why not enjoy the moments we get to be together? If you all have questions about specific venomous snakes or how to respond more specifically to different venomous snakes, because there are some differences, then please leave comments, because I am planning on making a video that talks about different kinds of snakes in North America, and it would be great to know what things you guys would like to know about. Just remember, the guidelines that I've outlined here are general snake safety rules. They're not going to be specific to specific species, but these rules will work for all of the snake species in North America. All right, well, that is all for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully are better prepared for what to do if you encounter a snake. And hopefully you like them more and hopefully you're less afraid of them. So thank you all for watching and have a great, great life, everyone.